Okay, we should be live. Microphone looks good. Okay, so we're back. We're doing more of my anniversary retrospective, looking back on our past decks and trying to find any updates from sets that came out after we did the decks. So <clears throat> today we are on Gearson Starn from the Warhammer 40k decks. And we are starting with Brothers War, which I think came out before uh, the Warhammer decks, but we had the spoilers for the Warhammer decks before this, kind of like how we have um, the, like we're starting to get the Doctor Who um, Commander deck spoilers, but we don't, uh, like, it will come out, I believe, after the Wilds of Eldraine set. I think that's the release order. I could be wrong about that. But I think a similar thing happened with the Warhammer decks where Gearson was a known quantity before Brothers War came out, but the Brothers War set released before the Warhammer set released, I think. I could be wrong about that. I might be misremembering, but I feel like that's how it happened. Like, we knew the cards from the Warhammer deck a while before we actually got them. So I was able to go over the deck and what I would build with it. I could be misremembering. It might have come out before Brothers War, and I just can't remember. But that feels correct to me. So we are looking at Brothers War, since I have no cards pulled from the Brothers War for Gearson, to see if there was anything. Uh, we are focusing on the Pings version of Gearson. I did also build a... Um, Storm version of Gearson, but I did not care for it. Like, when the final build was done, it felt like it was very meh. I did not like it. I would, like, after seeing what the deck list looked like, I would not ever build that deck. <clears throat> like, it did not feel like something I would enjoy playing with, so one day we'll build a fun Storm deck for Commander, but Gearson was not that deck. So we are focused on the pings version of the deck where we try and deal one damage a whole bunch of times in order to trigger Gearson multiple times and have him deal lots of extra damage to things. So things that make one power creatures, things that deal a single point of damage, usually to multiple targets or can be activated um, multiple times in a turn or trigger every turn and don't have too much of an initial investment are all possible cards to include. A return target artifact you control to owner's hand. Copy target artifact spell you control. I don't remember Gearson having a ton of artifacts where this would be a thing. He does have some, but most of them are not uh, damage sources. Caltrops would not be bad copied. Just looking at that one. Um, Skull Clamp is okay. Hop is only useful in that it lets us draw extra cards. Like we can put the copy on top of our deck and have it cease to exist and then draw the next card in our deck type of thing. Uh, Blade Sickle doesn't need to be multiples of. Neither does Bassless Collar. Scar Mage, Firebrand Archer, Chain Whirler, Murmuring Mystic, Mizzet, Rowl Storm's Conduit, Sahili, Yeah, I'm not seeing a ton of artifacts that I would really want to make copies of. So far, the biggest one by far is the, um, the Caltrops, actually. Because then there's two different artifacts both dealing one damage to each attacking creature, which means that every attacking creature would take six from Gearson at that point, so... 
Yeah, it doesn't look like anything else. Okay. What's now? Explosion. <clears throat> Dragon engine. Held on no. Don't scry it. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the anchor itself, not forging the anchor. So even less so. Because we don't have a ton of artifacts in the deck. Enthusiast. Blast Runner. Cinder Maw. Stone Seeker. Uh, begin of your end step. If you cast a non creature spell, reveal the top five cards of your library. For each card type among non creature spells you cast this turn, you may put a card of that type from among them into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Eh, she's alright for card advantage. Because we do have a lot of non creature spells in Gearson, but I'd rather just draw some extra cards most of the time. We have a decent number of creatures and non-creatures because we have a bunch of creatures that ping or make 1-1 one, one tokens when we do our thing, so. There's a lot of room for hitting creature spells, unfortunately, with that and having to put them on the bottom or not triggering it all because we're casting creature spells with it out, so. Yeah, so sorry to hear Cole, but I don't think we actually need her. Uh, mechanized Warfare falls into the category of things that make me sad how Gearson is worded. Because uh, he's not a replacement effect, so any replacement effect that changes the amount of damage dealt will negate Gearson's ability to deal damage. So, adding one point of damage from the Mechanized Warfare actually cancels out the two points of damage that Gearson would add and makes it do less damage. Uh, you may discard up to X cards and draw a card for each card discarded this way. Uh, X damage to a creature, X damage to a planeswalker, plus X plus zero, and haste. Yeah, none of those are super helpful. Put it Excavation Prodigy, the Foundry. Onslaught. Research desk. <clears throat> nope. Equal the number of non-land permits they control. Put all permanent cards revealed this way onto the battlefield and the rest into their graveyard. Nope. Eh, don't actually need the strong bowl. Uh, I discard your hand if you do draw three cards. No. <clears throat> Flesh Gorger. Can't run Dispenser. Portal. The Pyrrhic Blast. A lot of my creatures don't actually have one power. Uh, because they make one power creatures or deal one damage some other way. So trying to get the, like, token creature to sacrifice to this. Because I do have a bunch of cards in the deck that deal one damage and draw me a card. So. That is a thing, but it's not really a thing in this deck. Uh, this is a Healy Scry one. You may tap an untapped artifact you control to draw a card. Minus two, make two one ones with flying and haste. And artifact creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and artifact spells you cast cost one less. Okay, so her ultimate is actually detrimental. If the artifact creatures are already one ones, we don't want them to get plus one, plus one. Um, and I don't have a ton of artifacts where the costing one less is going to be a huge deal. So it's mostly her first two abilities. Eh. <clears throat> no 
don't think we need this Sahili. The other Sahili just passively makes 1-1 uh, one, one servos every time we cast a non-creature spell, which is why she's on the list. And the Rao can copy my spells and deals 1 damage when I cast an instant or sorcery, or copy it. He has, like, before it was a thing, Magecraft on him, so... <clears throat> Both of those are way more in keeping with the, what the deck is trying to do as far as Planeswalkers go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, don't need Rivalry. Don't need the Battalion. Sentinel. Learn lesson, retrieval unit, <clears throat> uh, surge engine. Yeah, really not on theme with the deck. I'm looking at because I want to draw a lot of cards, always, especially when I'm anywhere near blue. But <clears throat> We make an okay number of 1-1s. We also have a bunch of cards that make XX tokens based on certain things, but... A lot of our natural creatures do not have square stats. We've got 3-2 here. Gearson's a 3-2. The Exalted Flamer's a 2-4. I feel like most of the creatures in his deck aren't naturally square stats. Okay, that one is. Uh, Young Peasy's a 2-1. This was before I put in all of the game text for all of the creatures when I knew them. It's like, yeah, I might need to search to see how many wizards I have or something like that. Um, Roastmaster's a 3-2, uh, Hellkite's a 4-4, four, four. Shaman's a 1-3. Okay, he might have more square stack creatures than I thought, but he has a lot of, uh, non-square stack creatures where the power and toughness are not the same number. Uh, this one's a 2-2, two, two, so it does have that, 3-3. Three, three. And then, like I said, the ones that make tokens tend to make ones that are 1-1s one, or XXs, so those work. Uh, Niv's a 5-5, five, five. Mystic's a 1-5, Oiler's a 3-3, three, three. Archer's a 2-1, Soulscar's a 1-2. <clears throat> you see how I might have thought he had <clears throat> almost exclusively... <clears throat> wow, okay. I get some water. <clears throat> see if I can stop choking to death. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> you can see why I might have thought... He didn't have a lot of square static creatures with how many don't actually have power equal to toughness. Uh, it's a 3-1. Glenelendra's a 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, it feels like it might be closer to 50-50 on the actual creatures in the thing. Maybe like 60-40 in favor of them actually having square stats, but... <clears throat> Like I said, I do make a lot of 1-1 tokens and a lot of XX tokens. <clears throat> Actually, that might be... The only thing that makes the XX tokens left might be... Oh, no, we have Summons and um, Shark Typhoon. We have both of them in the deck, so... Hey, let's see if I'm good now. Hmm. Choose target opponent, destroy target land they control, three damage to that player, and one damage to each creature they control for six mana. I feel like that's not anywhere near good enough. I got sidetracked by the one damage to all their creatures, but I think we're doing better than that with some of the other cards that we're running already that are way cheaper than this, so... Uh, Teferi, loyalty counter, draw a card, 2-2 two, two spirit, yeah, I don't need any of those effects, don't need the might stone, huh, maybe the Brothers War was out by the time I was working on this deck, because I'm looking at Third Path Iconoclast, and I'm... I feel like I thought about putting that in this deck back at the beginning. Like, I did notice that I have, um, for this deck, a bunch of suggestions for more expensive, like, 
cheaper cards to take out for some of the more expensive ones. I don't remember seeing him on the list, so I probably didn't think I needed any other um, creatures that are making 1-1s, one but... <clears throat> so the Iconoclast is a 2-mana two 2-1. Two Non-creature spell makes a 1-1 one one artifact creature token. So it's a two-color Young Pyromancer. Is Young Pyromancer only instants and sorceries? Because that might push me... Wow. Where am I searching here? I meant to go over to this one and go back for Young Pyromancer, and then I started typing instants and sorceries. Because um, I feel like Young Pyromancer is only instants and sorcery spells. Yeah. Create a 1-1 one, one red element. Maybe I thought about putting this guy in, at, like, I saw him after I was done with Gears. So I was like, oh, that would be a good Gearson creature. Because, yeah, he triggers off of my artifacts, enchantments, and planeswalkers also, and I don't think the different colors of mana are that huge a deal. So, yeah, I think we can drop young Pyromancer. And, yeah, I don't think I would have cut him now that I'm looking at him compared to young Pyromancer. Pretty sure I would have done this, so the fact that I didn't already means that I thought about doing this after or third path iconoclast. Sorry. <laughs> Is blue and a red for a human wizard two one? And I cast a non non creature. I get a one one art soldier token. <clears throat> yeah, I think we replace Young Pyromancer with a third path iconoclast. <clears throat> now I definitely like that change because he just triggers off of more of the stuff that we're running. Uh, we don't scry a bunch, so the anchor, again, isn't really a thing. <clears throat> Scrapsmith, don't need the tower worker. Smogrin's crown. <clears throat> uh, five damage to our creature, planeswalker, and two damage to that permanent's controller. Nope. Okay, let's see if I'm done choking this time. Uh, let's see. Minus two, minus O, oh, tap Power Stone, Construct, Scry one, draw a card. Nope. Don't need Subjugation. Visions of Phyrexia. For Sentinel. I feel like I glossed over a couple of the um, prototype creatures on the first page. I'm going to go back and just double check. Uh, Arcane Proxy is a 4 3 or a 2 1, and I don't think I need that particular effect. Um, oh, this one has Unearth, and it pumps my artifact creatures, so no. Uh, can't run the blue, black, red one. Six four three two. Don't need the courier. Depth charge. 
Yeah, I think my brain just tuned them out entirely, which is not the worst thing, since most of them don't seem to be a thing anyway. But at the same time, I did just not even register most of them existing. <coughs> hey! Okay. Yep, something about talking for more than a minute or two just makes me start choking to death, and I don't know why. Um, yeah, I didn't want any of those. Liberator. Okay. <clears throat> Juggernaut. I remember looking at the workbench, so maybe by now, yeah, I was paying more attention to them <clears throat> at this point. All right, so that was the Brothers' War, and the Brothers' War Commander. All right, let's add that in. Uh, the Brothers War. Two t uh, tap power stones. <clears throat> uh, two target players. They attack each other. X is... Or X damage to any target. X damage to any other target. X is the number of artifacts I control. <clears throat> uh, can't run Taunos. X is the number of artifacts. Whenever an artifact an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, deal one damage to that player. That is super tempting. <clears throat> that is the most anti-treasure card with Gearson in play. It's like, oh, you activate a treasure, lightning bolt you. You know, just because. <clears throat> just because that's what my deck does. Um... I don't know that I have room for him, though. Like, he's very narrow, what he's hating on, and I don't blow up tons of artifacts normally. I do have Shattering Pulse and a few other artifact removal spells, but... <clears throat> oh, God. I can not... Like, I start talking, and then my throat starts closing up again. And... Give me one minute. <clears throat> nope. Didn't didn't even get a full like you know, sentence fragment out <clears throat> before I started choking again. Uh repercussion is definitely staying. <clears throat> Sharpshooter, yes. Um Do I have anything else that punishes opponents for things dying where this one just might be better. Um, we have Hissing Iguanar. That's not terrible. <clears throat> as far as replacement options go. Creatures dying is going to happen more often. But if I have enough when creatures die things, I might want to see about when artifacts die. Murmuring Mystic, no, Nip Mizzet, Rattle Storm's Conduit, Sahili, <coughs> uh, Rock Slide Sorcerer. Most of the things do trigger off me casting spells, so I'm more inclined to focus on that, but dealing them one damage every time an artifact they control dies just seems so good against things like treasures and clues and food. And I'm really curious if I have anything <clears throat> that triggers, or I might just want this instead. That's true. I have Maniform Hellkite also, uh, along with the Summons and the Shark Typhoon. Guardianship, Exalted Flamer...
Uh, whenever another creature dies, this deals one damage to a player or planeswalker. So, very similar to Hissing Iguanar. In fact, I think this is just a better Hissing Iguanar. Like, this one is 3 2 first strike for 3. On my, it has first strike on my turn, and whenever another creature dies, this deals one damage to a player or planeswalker versus, versus Hissing Iguanar, which is a 3 1, and creature dies, I deal one damage to a player or planeswalker. I think I might be okay with having only one of those two and having the Sardian Avenger, so. Come down here to the commander section and go <clears throat> Sardian Avenger is one in a red goblin warrior. 1-1. One, one. He's also a base 1-1, one, one, so... Is... First Strike... Trample... These Art Dies... This deals 1 to that player. I guess we can put them. So it works. Back here, replace sing on our with Sardian Avenger. Okay, um <clears throat> Don't need the Staff of Titania, don't need Workshop. The highest mana value among artifacts you control. Yeah, I don't have enough artifacts for that. Uh, choose target artifact creature you control. For each creature chosen this way, create a token that's a copy of it and overload. Uh, flying double strike. Creatures attacking your opponents have double strike. That's marginally tempting to give double strike to all of my one power creatures. <clears throat> so that way they deal one and Gearson deals two, and then they deal one and Gearson deals two. I still don't think it's good enough. Oops. I've murdered my fan. Back to me, fan. I need you. It is way too hot back here. There we go. Um, so, uh, whenever a non-token artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a colorless artifact token named Scrap. Sacrifice an artifact, choose one. Go target, sure, discard a card, then draw a card. Nope. Can't run the music box. Don't need Machine God's effigy, but... Don't need scavenge brawlers, and then I don't need these two, like, artifact-centric things. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think I need the effigy for anything. Like, we're not running, um, Metamorph, I don't think. Metallurgic summons, yeah, we don't have Phyrexian Metamorph, so we're not doing that. Alright, so that was the Brothers' War. All right, we have to do the Transformers ones real quick. Make sure there aren't, like, single-point damage cards from any of them. Uh, he's a 3-4. He has Adapt. That's not happening. And this one's a 3-2 and a 3-4. Double Strike Haste for... Yeah. Yeah, none of that is anything relevant to what we're doing. Hey, right, so that was the Brothers' War. Uh, after the Brothers Wars, Phyrexia all will be won. <sighs> we 
Whenever one or more counters are put on a permanent or player, all will be one deals that much damage to target opponent, creature in opponent controls, or planeswalker in opponent controls. So obviously the goal with this is to put a single counter on a single permanent, well, on multiple permanents ideally, but I don't think I have anything that does counters because I don't want plus one plus one counters because that actually messes with Gearson if the creature is small enough. So I don't think I have any counters matter things at all in this deck. So the only way I would be able to get counters onto a thing is like plussing Planeswalkers. And I'm pretty sure the Planeswalkers I have, one of them doesn't plus at all because it's an uncommon one from... Um, War of the Spark, and the other one pluses two, I believe. So that's two counters, so no Gearson. Uh, Glenelendra Archmage gets a counter when she comes back. That would count. Um, Tremors, Make Mischief, Soul Scar Mage, Firebrand Archer. Yeah, this makes an XX rather than putting X counters onto it. So, at least I'm 99% sure. That'd be really weird if it actually used counters, because it shouldn't. Yeah, create an XX, so it just has those stats. Good Awakening, Archmage Emeritus. Yeah, the only thing is with Soul Scar Mage, it would do a lot because then all of my one damage sources are um, Wither. It also works with the um, the Blight Sickle too. Come to think of it, if I'm doing if the source is dealing damage to uh, creatures. Hmm. I don't think that's enough to merit all will be one though, so unfortunately I think it just has to not go in the deck. Card no play of shared souls no Sun. Uh, deals damage to a player. You may sacrifice it if you do proliferate when it dies. It deals damage equal to its power to any target. Not quite good enough <clears throat> for what I'm doing. Then only if an oil counter is removed from a permit you controlled this turn or a permit with an oil counter I was put into a graveyard. Using most of my here because I kind of glossed over like three or four of these cards in a row. Like I saw a corrupt, and then I'm like, this thing makes it too big, and I just and then this one was actually a black color identity. It's just like no, I can't use any of those cards. So my brain just kind of skipped ahead a few, and then it went past a couple things that technically we could have considered, but weren't anything either. Raptor. Demolition. Deals one damage to each creature your opponents control. Creatures your opponents control can't block this turn. We have a whole bunch of other effects that deal one damage to each of our opponents creatures that aren't this. Also, I'm pretty sure we're not running Cosmotronic Wave, which is just this with a different name. Yeah. If we're not running Cosmotronic Wave, then we're not running this because we already had the option to run that and didn't since they are the same card with a different name. Don't need 
sticker moon gauntlet for anything. Uh, graveyards, 20 or more cards in it. You draw three cards, otherwise you draw a card. And mill three times X. No. Well, the number of mountains you control. No. Nope. Okay. Don't need the cackler. Sprinter. Watcher. Nope. Yeah, the mites are okay, but if we're not running any of the other make one one lands, I don't think we need that. Uh, cast a non creature spell, create X one ones, where X is the mana value of the spell. Huh. That is, so, it's a seven drop. But, it might be better than Metallurgic Summons. Like... So, when I cast an Insert Sorcery, I make a single construct with power toughness equal to CMC. I can spend five and exile this to return all my instants and sorceries from my graveyard to my hand if I have six or more artifacts. And it's a five drop. The fact that it's a five drop and it gets back my spells might push it over the top against this thing. Or some of my other insanely high casting cost things. I might possibly have room for this in place of one of them. Like, it needs to be at least five mana, preferably six or more, and I can consider replacing it with uh, Ovika here. Because the fact that she makes X one ones instead of one XX is kind of a big game. For this deck, I would much rather have a swarm of one ones than one giant creature, like every single time. Uh, the downside is, of course, she is a seven drop, so yeah, I don't think I want to replace Shark Typhoon. The other thing is that Shark Typhoon and Metallurgic Summons are non creatures, but I am a very creature centric deck. <clears throat> so, destroying my artifacts and enchantments is not normally the high priority, so my stuff is getting blown up because other people's stuff is problematic most of the time. Like, I could see if going in in place of Arcane Bombardment. Since I have less control <clears throat> over it, it does work very well with cards like um, Rao Storm's Conduit. And also, I am casting these spells, so I do get the triggers for when I cast a instant or sorcery from all of my cards. Uh, definitely not replacing Chandra. Chandra is absolutely insane in this deck. Um, her Incinerator... Um, I do have a lot of, like, the Incinerator can actually go infinite with repercussions, or not infinite, but it can, like, feedback loop itself until the creatures are dead. If their creature is indestructible, I think I can kill them by dealing one point of damage, and then dealing one point of damage to their creature, which repercussions would deal one damage back to them, and Gearson's triggering all these times, so... That would actually work. The Exalted Flamer is only four mana. Yeah, I want to put Ovika down as a possible thing. Like, I might want to try it out if some card isn't pulling its weight. Ooh. 
Pika Enigma Goliath. Five blue red. Five ward three plus three life. When I cast a non creature, I get one one Pyrexian goblins with haste equal to DMC. There we go. <clears throat> so if there's a card that's really not pulling its weight, or I want like a bigger, splashier thing, we can consider Ovika <clears throat> for the deck. Don't need Prologue, Injector. Red Sun's Twilight, I don't think. Rebel Salvo. Uh, equip creature you control. Other than Rook, Hex Gold, Nabber attacks or dies. Attach all equipment and <clears throat> attach to that creature to Rook. Nope. Uh, whenever you cast a non creature, put an oil counter on it. Remove an oil counter, deals one damage. So it can build up the counters, but it can't actually <clears throat> um, trigger multiple times in a single turn to deal damage. So, put an oil counter on it, three damage. Slow bad. Sulfim runs into the same problem as all the other um, damage replacement effects. Mobilizer, log book, not proliferating, don't need the fear lands. Pilgrim Silex. Mycosynth Garden. Retrofitter. Pointer. No. No, that's a reprint. All right. Phyrexia All will be one. For all will be one commander. That's the list. Uh, create a token that's a copy of target artifact creature you control, target non artifact creature you control, and entwine. Exile a spell you control. Target opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a card with mana value equal to 1 plus the exiled spell's mana value. Exile that card, then that player shuffles. You may cast that exiled card without paying its mana cost. Don't need Chiskorath. Don't need the Lux Artillery. Any for artifacts, create five two twos. No. Um... The first combat phase, no. Uh, one or more creatures attack, you may pay red and one. Creatures attacking your opponents and or planeswalkers they control get plus two plus O. Oh. No, and the glistening sphere. Nope, okay. For two aftermath. Or not aftermath, March of the Machines, then aftermath. <laughs> uh, equal to the number of artifacts you control in Crew 1. <clears throat> Don't think so. Scrap Chomper, Fusel. Uh, create a treasure, no. Uh, first instant or sorcery spell, you may cast a spell with lesser mana value that shares a type. 
If you don't make Ragavan, uh, don't make the Beat Stick, Blood Feather, new. No. I think we need Kaitos. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. This ability triggers only once each turn. Plus two, add two mana in any combination of colors. Plus one, exile the top five cards of your library until end of your next turn. You may cast an instant or sorcery from among those cards, and minus actually deals that much damage to each of up to two targets. I don't mind the copying effect, but I don't think we need her. Obviously, I'd much rather have Awakened Inferno. She's just doing way more. I do like the copy effect, but I don't think that's enough to get her into the deck. Like, a lot of our spells are not super expensive. That's why I couldn't find a reason to pull, like, a card I could pull for Ovika, where I was definitely like, yeah, no, we can lose that and pick this one up. And I think she's worse in the deck than Ovika, so. Uh, Chrome Host is too slow because we have to pay for each one of the things. So even though it comes down like three mana worth of turn or three turns worth of mana sh sooner, having to spend the two on each of the tokens that we're making just seems underwhelming. Um. Don't need City on Fire for the same reason as all the other ones like it. Crag Smasher, Defiant Thunder Maw. Yeah, I'm looking at the Disciples because I can't remember which of the front faces is the four damage to a player and one damage, or four damage to, it's four damage to something and one damage to a creature, I believe, and I don't think we want that, because it's going to be like these guys or the ward to life creature that we don't super need either, but... I am at least, like, I have that in the back of my head is that there are battles that deal one damage. I'm trying to remember exactly how they work. I haven't needed to use them in a while. Don't need the Lookout, the Eyes of Gataxius, the Mastermind, the Scald. Now, Furnace Gremlin is a 1-2. When it dies, Incubate X where X is its power. I don't need the spell stalker. No. Your disciplinary mascot has convoke ward three. Blue top four cards of your library, put one of them in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Okay. Uh, two damage to each of those things, any number of cards from your hand on the bottom and draw that main plus one. All right, um, reveal, put in your hand. If you search your library this way, shuffle, that's five. Oh no, um, where's its defense value? Or is the defense value also five? Oh no, it's seven, okay. Um, you cast an instant or sorcery spell from your hand. You may copy that spell and you may choose new targets. Search your library, graveyard, and or outside the game for an instant or sorcery card you own. Yeah, I don't think that's anywhere near good enough. Invasion of call time. I can discard lands to deal damage, I think. Uh, three damage to each creature and each planeswalker. No. Adia, don't need Ravnica. I don't think. What's the other half? The sentry? Because I do have some blue red spells in the deck. Uh, it's exactly two colors. Top six. Reveal a card that's exactly two colors. Nope. 
Not quite good enough. All right, Ragatha is four damage to another target battle or opponent, and one damage up to one target creature, and that's not going to be good enough either. Uh, Segovia gives me two one ones with Trample, and that's okay, but not amazing. We have better things to do. Uh, cast a non-creature spell with mana value three or greater. Draw a card. We actually have enough cheap spells that Jin isn't going to trigger that often for the card draw aspect of him. So. Semantic Barrage, Bone Splitter, of Truth, Warcrafting. No, no, no. Can't run. Um, another target creature you control gains haste. Takes out the beginning of the next end step, only as a sorcery. Yeah, if I'm not running Kiki Jiki, I don't think I care about Ortheon here. No. Fire. Enforcements. Nope. Uh, top target creature and opponent controls and put a stun counter on it. No. Lord, pay two life. Cast a spell. Deal two damage to each opponent. Really what I'm looking for. Like, yes, technically it works in the deck because I'm dealing damage to all of my opponents when I'm casting my instants and sorceries and whatnot. But honestly, I just want Gearson and his one damage matters thing to be what we're killing them with, so... I don't think it's actually... Like, at that point, why am I building blue-red Gearson if I'm going to run cards like that and not just a better blue-red burn commander that would let me use all of the double and triple damage enchantments or add extra damage to each source enchantments that we could be running? Like, Gearson wants a very specific thing. He wants one damage sources. Um... Copy target spell or create a token that's a copy of target creature. Shatter. Gittering Surveyor. Stoke the Flames. Once in Future. I do have a fair number of uh, very cheap instants and sorceries in the deck, but not enough, I don't think. We might be down for Aurobrask, though. Now that I'm seeing the great work. Uh, and each creature they control, three treasures, and I can cast instants and sorceries from any graveyard. Thrasher, Trailblazing Historian, no. Transcendent Message. Alright, cast an instant or sorcery, deal one damage to target opponent, and add red. That is super tempting over anything else that deals one damage to an opponent when I cast a spell, so let's see what we have for Ourobrask in that category. I don't think I have anything that deals one damage to target opponent when I cast an instant or sorcerer. I think it's each opponent, but if I have one left that is target opponent, then I'm probably going to want to replace it with Aurobrask. Pity and I, Needle Drop, Flame Jab, Archmage. Thing that deals one damage to an opponent. That's the problem. I think I cut on there. Yeah, this one deals one damage to each opponent. Is only two mana. Uh, one damage to each opponent. Their creatures and planeswalkers. It's a little bit tempting to replace Chain Whirler because Chain Whirler is a one shot from when it comes in. I don't have a lot of ways to bounce it. It does effectively deal three damage to my opponents and all of their things though that aren't battles. So. Rao, Sahili, 
Oxide Sorcerer is any target, so... I could see replacing him, though. Any target is decent, though, and allows for more shenanigans with um, repercussions. Damage to each opponent... Form Hellkite. It might be something like Mana Form Hellkite, but. Damage to each opponent. It's a 1 1. Chandra, the Incinerator. Yeah, there's a part of me that wants to consider Orobrask. And his great work. We'll put them there for right now. There might be a card, but as of right now, I'm not seeing it, so... Don't need any of these. <clears throat> Nope, okay. Yeah, Ourobrask is definitely interesting. <clears throat> and if I had room, or if I had something that I felt like, like the closest thing is something like Maniform Hellkite, which... <sighs> so he's guaranteed to be one damage. Um, anything for one or two mana... Or, I'm sorry, anything for two mana is worse with Hellkite, because then it's dealing two damage, so Gearson never triggers. Three gets it back up to the same as one, and four is more damage than he would normally deal, so. <clears throat> Actually, real quick, for the mana form Hellkite, that was any non creature? How does this work? Is it mana form? There it is. Yeah, it's any non creature. So, if it were instants and sorceries, I also might replace with Orobrask. Alright. So, March of the Machine Commander next. List around. Don't have enough Planeswalkers for the talents. Uh, Deluxe Dragster deals combat damage to a player. You may cast our instant or sorcery from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. Uh, horsemanship. Other knights you control have horsemanship. Path of the Enigma. Target player draws four cards. Then you can do the thing with the whatchamacallit cards. Uh, deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of target artifact that player controls. No. <sighs> Don't think we want Dance with Calamity for any reason. Death Greeter Champion. Uh, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under my control, deal one damage to, to target opponent. And sack two artifacts. Yeah, I don't make enough treasure. If I did, this would be like almost instantly in the deck. Or if all of the token creatures I was making were artifacts. I could see this being in there. Yeah, I don't think we need Pain Distributor. I'm looking at him because he's similar to the Cliff Stomper, but the Cliff Stomper is actually a one-power first strike creature, so that's way more relevant to this deck than a three-mana two-three would be with Menace. And he has to be in play 
and he's giving them the treasure, so the treasure might still be... Like, if they're making treasure and I'm punishing them for it, that's one thing. If I'm giving them treasure and then hoping they get punished for that, that's an entirely other thing. So... Civil, or uncivil unrest, rather. Bitter thorn or the elixir. Okay. Back we go. Now to aftermath. Let's see what we get. Uh, creature you control attacks or a creature enters the battlefield on your control attacking. Um, may put a creature card with man value less than onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Nope. Arn. Uh, top six cards of your library. You may reveal a dragon card. No. Bargain the sorry. Reckless handling. Uh, enters the battlefield. Whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you may have Sarkin copy of it. No. Direction. Don't need training grounds. Look at the top card of your library at any time. At the beginning of each combat, reveal the top card of your library. If you reveal a creature card, it becomes a copy of that card until end of turn, except it has flying. I think so. Filter. Okay. So nothing fun in aftermath. So those were and Lord of the Rings was the last thing. And it's commander. What deals one damage in this set that I'm forgetting? There's the cast into the fire. Uh, and goblins and orcs gain double strike and haste until end of turn. But no. Bilbo. No. No. So there's cast into the fire. I don't think, oops, I don't think I need that for anything because it does one damage to each of up to two targets or I exile an artifact. And I think I have like a reasonable amount of artifact destruction. We have Shattering Pulse, we have Into the Core, but I don't think we have much more than that. Like if this were better than a random artifact destruction spell that could deal a point of damage somewhere. You know, like a variant on Smash to Smithereens. I think it's Smash to Smithereens. I think of a different card. Um, what's the one that dealt three damage to the artifact's controller? The Smash to Smithereens might be the uh, flashback card. Great, now it's bothering me. Oh no, it is Smash to Smithereens. Okay. Yeah, so something along those lines. I might replace it, but I don't think I have anything like that. Deck. To the core, Cyclonic Rift, Impact Tremors. Do I have a worse artifact destruction spell than Cast into the Fire? somehow this list signal 
Your scarring ship. Nope, does not look like it. Okay. I don't need Aomir or Aomir. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, deal one damage to each opponent. Is she better stats wise than any of the other ones? She is specifically instant and sorcery, so let's double check. She's unlikely to be better because of that. Like, we have a bunch of them that care about any non creature spell, but we'll double check just to be on the safe side. Firebrand Archer is the same thing with different creature types. Rockslide Sorcerer, which is one of the other ones I could potentially trade out for um, Orabrask. But being able to deal damage to any target might just be good enough. Uh, Fire Breather is a 2-mana 1-3, and being a 1-3 is actually better stats in this deck. Because that gives it more defense and allows it to actually deal more damage if it connects while Gearson's out, so... Kind of doing all the things there. Yep, yeah, no, nobody's... Worse than the Flamesmith, so. Sorry, Flamesmith. The Fall, because we're not normally overkilling creatures. I need Flame up a more. Fires of Mount Doom. Definitely don't need Foray of Orcs. Uh, I probably don't need Gandalf for his sanction. So Gimli is specifically an opponent's creature dies. So worse than Hissing Iguanar or the uh, Devil from one of the Jumpstart sets, I feel like. Also has to deal it uh, specifically to that creature's controller. So. Yeah, if I needed more of that effect specifically, I might be able to do that, but I don't. I just need better. I feel like we skipped over Fear Fire Foes somewhere, right? Like it was up here somewhere, and I just saw Fiery Conscription. and Yeah, there it is. Um, deals X damage to target creature and 1 damage to each creature with the same controller. So the big downside to Fear Fire Foes is that it's only hitting one player's worth of stuff, whereas most of the cards I currently have on Gearson's list, if not all of them, they're either one target or everything that's not me and my stuff. So... While that is interesting, I don't quite think it's good enough. But I did want to double check exactly how it's worded for multiplayer. And would... I think I want the Horn of Gondor. I'm already not running, um... What's his name? Let's shrink that down for a good measure. Um, Cranko. Yeah, so if we're not running Krenko, I don't think we need um, Horn of Gondor either. Even though we have some amount of humans in the deck. Bees. Moria. Mithril. Oat. Rauder has double strike. Deals combat damage to a player. Exile the top card of your library. 
Can I play that card this turn? Yeah, I'm already not running the um the one three double strike trampler from um Theros. I don't think I'm running Moria Marauder for the same reason. Uh Palantar's life loss. Also it's not really on theme for the deck. I just love that card, so just taking a moment to appreciate it. Think about whether or not I should jam it into this deck, and the answer is no. No, I should not. Yeah, I don't think we need Quarrel's End. Hiram Lancer. Trickery. Smite. Spiteful Banditry will kill all of my stuff if I'm doing it. So, like, either I deal one damage to my things also, and then Gearson shoots all of them to death, including himself, or I deal two damage or more, in which case all of those same creatures probably die. Like, most of them are not X3s. I uh, don't need Storm of Saruman. Moria. The One Ring. Is life loss rather than damage, so I could run it if I super wanted to. I don't think so. I don't need the desolation. Or there and back again, rather. Watcher in the water with nine stun counters on it. Yeah, no. Tons of words, not a particularly strong effect. Okay, and last but not least. Most likely. It could be the least out of all of them that we've done today. I don't know. I don't know what I'm expecting to find here. Probably stuff from the Mordor deck, mostly. I guess the Humans deck has a few things. And, like... Red and white. There is a human stack, right? That's like red white. Um, whenever a commander deals combat damage to a player, if there's no monarch, you become the monarch. The beginning of the monarch's end step, that player draws a card. Sayers. All right, there's a dead Thor where he's got the Palantar. Um, and it's a battlefield scry two. Sacrifice Denethor, target player becomes the monarch. Denethor deals three damage to any target. Nope. Uh, you become the monarch. Monarch controls enchanted creature. Attacks each combat if able and can attack you. They pay five if you do tap all creatures your opponent's control and put a stun counter on each of them. Island cycling two. Aren't the chosen type to their owner's hand? No. Subjugate. Uh, each player secretly votes for a creature you don't control, and those votes are revealed for each creature with one or more votes, but that many stun counters on it, then tap it. Steal all my opponent's stuff, and I can't attack them or sacrifice them. Artifacts and opponent controls. Flying Trample Haste. Uh, you create a treasure token for each artifact that player has. 3 mana, 1-1 one, one Double Strike. Another legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on him. Deals combat damage to a player. Create a treasure token. Yeah, I kind of don't like that I have to put the counter on him. Like, if I didn't have to do that, there might be a world where I run him as a weird ramp spell. Or at least look at him for more than the time I'm already spent on him. Uh, other orcs have Trample, plus X plus O, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Uh, 
Don't do that. Don't do the Crown of Gondor. The Flame Rope. Uh, attacks that deals damage equal to its power to target creature defending player controls. Probably not. Model of Unity. And the Black Gate. Nope. Okay. So that will do it for our friend Gearson here. So not too bad. We replaced two cards out of his deck and added a couple cards that we might want to look at in the future. But yeah, that's going to do it for Gearson and for me for right now. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a break because staring at these cards and reading the list constantly just makes my eyes feel so strained still after all this time. Like, I have not built up any kind of tolerance to that. So, even with the lights on and the um, brightness of the screen turned down, I can still only go like an hour or two before it really starts to get to me. So, we'll call it for there for right now. Uh, give me a little bit and I'll be back on probably doing some drafts and then we'll see from there. But thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day.